this visit was also part of our effort to get as complete a picture as possible of the pain inflicted on protesters and demonstrators, innocent Kenyans, by the police. A similar exercise has gone on in different places across our country. We wish to extend uh, our very deep and sincere sympathies to families of the love and the love of the loved ones that we have lost and those who have been injured. From this afternoon's visit and reports from across the country, it is clear Kenyans have gone through horror and terror these past days. People whose only crime was to protest against policies that they feel worked against them have been shot, clobbered to a pulp, or maimed. A number of the injured may never walk again. Many may be condemned to a life on wheelchairs. These Kenyans are in our prayers, and we trust that our God, who stands for justice, and whom we all know never sleeps, nor slumbers, will lift them up. Unfortunately, Interior Cabinet Secretary Professor Kidore Kindiki, whom I know very well, in fact, I call him in uh, local languages out there, across the t river Tana, uh, Sendaka, whom I know well. I don't know what has gone to him. Seems to love that brutality and takes pride in it. He had offered some more and heavier dose of brutality and gunfire today, despite our announcement that we would only be holding vigils in honor of the victims. We pray that the fair and just God will enable Professor Kindiki to live long enough to be able to witness justice being done to these victims of state-sponsored brutality. In the fullness of time, justice will have to be done. Justice is the only way to ensure peace and stability in our country. We know there can be no peace without justice. I refer to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 at verse 17, and I quote, learn to do good Seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, and please the widow's cause. End of quote. Professor Kindiki must make no mistake. We will pursue justice locally and internationally for these injured and slain heroes. These people who have been shot in cold blood in cold July are heroes and patriots. All they were asking for is to get a fair, just, and caring nation where their complaints are taken seriously as an attempt to create a more perfect nation. At this moment, we thank all those Kenyans who have extended any kind of help to the families and victims. People need a lot of help because of the magnitude of injuries and deaths. We encourage more people to come out and help in whichever way little they can. We appeal to Kenyans of goodwill not to tire of doing good. We extend our deep appreciation to our medical personnel, all caregivers, and first responders like the Kenya Red, Red Cross for going all out to ensure the injured got treatment and the dead got preserved with dignity. We know it was a wish of Interior CS that the injured don't get help and the dead de don't get acknowledged by hospitals and government agencies. That order remains in place as we speak, which is why getting an accurate and complete figure of the dead is difficult. But we will get there. We are working meticulously day and night, and I thank you, Pio and I, and your team, even for the presentation. The world now knows what has actually happened in our country in the last few days, and I think we want to thank Pio and that team. We also thank our members of parliament 
and county assembly members for their continued support for and solidarity with our people, particularly in rural areas. As we speak, there are many, many Kenyans who are some in police custody, and I know that uh, some of our learned colleagues have gone out there. Dunstan Omari stands out because he stood with our teams in, in uh, and, and, and Degwa, Jiro. We want to thank you. Um, and, and, and because some of you actually been doing it pro bono to get these young men out. I know that uh, young council called Kala in Machakos got all the 43 out as of yesterday. Um, so we really appreciate, we appreciate all this. And in fact, some of you are even paying because these young men can hardly pay <laughs> the bail cash, 10,000, 5,000, some cannot even afford. And you members of parliament and counter assembly have been able to do, uh, to do this course justice. Our governors who have extended help, we recognize you and also thank you. We recognize the efforts you are making at the grassroots in rural areas where people need help most. Above all, we encourage everyone not to tire of doing good. We further take this opportunity to thank all those who have come out to honor and show love for our slain and injured heroes with candles and flowers. Indeed, they're also heroines. So a young lady who was uh, coming from the Goretti corner there got shot for no reason, even in our private parts. Please don't tire. You been able to give out candles out there as of midnight last night and flowers, let's all not get tired. The vigils, the prayers, and the laying of flowers continues tomorrow and throughout the weekend. We appeal to all our houses of worship to dedicate prayers to these heroes and innocent souls and for our country. In fact, I remember some of them issuing that call to prayer, which could have been last weekend, but we say, Please continue and, and mourn with us. Let's pray for God to soften the hearts of the pharaohs, pharaohs, pharaohs. <laughs> Michi Boko, you, you, you mentioned that very well. The pharaohs in government who would rather harm and kill our people instead of letting them go in the spirit of justice and freedom. Six years after independence. As part of our love and honor, for the slain and injured heroes of this struggle, we will hold interdenominational prayers on Friday, the 26 July 2023. That's a day after tomorrow, here in Nairobi, and this should also be replicated in the countries across the country. We will bless the souls of the injured and the dead. We will pray for the pharaohs in government to listen to the cries of our people about the high taxes and the rising cost of living. We will pray for our police to know that the people they brutalize, maim and kill are indeed their brothers, their sisters and fellow citizens. What became of the new title, National Police Service? It is now the opposite. It is a terrorizing force. We will continue praying for and pleading with the international community and all its institutions, especially those in the field of justice, democracy, and human rights, to stand with Kenyans against a regime gone rogue. During the prayers, we will call on the international community to call Kenya security agencies to order. Indeed, some of them have called them out, like the International Human Rights Commission in Geneva. Call them out. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. The international community must never lose sight of this fact. And either we are going as Africa to accept that it is the turn of Africa to rise and therefore be serious about the conduct of democracy or we accept that uh, uh, as the law of the jungle, literally the law of the jungle applies and making nonsense of any pretense at democracy and democratic governance. On Friday, we shall also announce the next steps forward with our anti-tax protest. Let's make no mistake. 
Kenyans are still hurting and we shall not relent until this regime acknowledges this grim reality of suffering and agrees to repeal the infamous Finance Act. We call on Kenyans not to surrender. We must not and we will not give up. Let us take comfort in the fact that the world has seen worse and more brutal regimes before. No regime can be so brutal as to outlive its people. <laughs> we shall overcome. Justice shall be done. Not our will God, but God's will. And this struggle continues, a luta continua. I thank you. In fact, looking at some of the names, a young boy of 13 years old. <laughs> I mean, what has happened to a sense of morality? The majority of those killed and injured are young people. And yet, we are people in office pretending they want to help our youth get employment, our youth get uh, to be able, because Lovik Ayondi, a minor, 13 years, Kibera Mashimoni, was shot on the right leg, a 13 year old. We've seen them today. Like we see my brother Ayla was not in a hurry. He wanted to see each one of them. We couldn't, because we, we also felt that this is an important matter and I think the world now knows what is happening in our wonderful nation. The choice is, do we allow it to deteriorate or do we, as Shakespeare said <laughs> in, in the, one of uh, Shakespearean uh, tragedies, Hamlet, or do we take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Of course Hamlet was trying to commit suicide. We can't afford to commit suicide in our nation. I thank you ladies and gentlemen.